Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness' sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore will he teach sinners in the way. The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach in his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth, unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. For thy name's sake, O Lord, pardon my iniquity, for it is great. What man is he, what man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. His soul shall dwell at ease, and his seed shall inherit the earth. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Mine eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Amen. Thank you for reading that for us, Mom. Now let's stand and read our key verse, which comes from 1 Corinthians 1, 28. They say in the world, and things which are fire, that are not chosen to and things which are not, to bring to mouth things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. Corinthians 1, 28 to 29. Once again, our lesson topic is wisdom and foolishness, and we're turning our lesson over to our deacon, teacher, deacon family. Good morning again, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We are, we're blessed to see everyone here this morning. For all our visitors, we thank God for you. Amen. Glad to see us here today. And again, Amen. send our condolences out to uh, the Watkins family and the Richardson family. They are in their time of bereavement and there's so much going on over the world so it is every time which is always we should pray for one another and so much happens so this is time that we need to have our sincere prayer for comfort for those that are going through something amen which is all of us amen we uh again have a great lesson this morning says the wisdom and foolishness uh we're going to ask someone, if you would, for our first outline to read verses 18 through 21. And <clears throat> just a little bit of a paragraph, because this is a lot of scripture we've got to cover, so we want to uh, kind of give enough time to <clears throat> okay? 1 Corinthians 18 through 21, so. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and will bring to, bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Okay, if you would, nice, if you would read down to where it says, stop. Uh, at verse 19. Paul explains that the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ, specifically the cross and the crucifixion, is the power of God. Paul confessed that God did not send him to baptize his people for the sake of making com converts, but to preach the gospel with simplicity without diminishing the power of the cross of Christ that leads to external salvation. Aware of Jewish expectations about the Messiah, Paul wrote that the preaching of the gospel is a powerful revelation of God's power to save, despite appearing as foolishness to those who chose to perish in their sins. Supporting his claim, God, Paul quoted Isaiah 29, 14, in which God vows to expound those who have no true love or devotion for him and seek to know him based on empty religion, wisdom, and intelligence. Okay, thank you. Good night short there we have a lot to cover in uh, 1 Corinthians the beginning of the chapter Paul addressed some issues he opened in uh, the letter to the church at Corinth and you know, to the Corinthian people about division among them so some was following the teaching of Paul some following Apollos some following uh, Cephas of Peter but Paul told in 1 Corinthians 1 and 5 that in everything you are enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge. What Paul was doing, Paul was calling for unity. And you know, we can get so 
divided. Yeah. Not just by the scripture, but we can get divided a lot of times with church politics. Amen. Politics is not just in the White House. Politics can creep up in the God house and we lose our focus. That's why we are the reason we ought to be here. Okay? And Paul addresses this and, and tells them that uh, they need to not worry about who teaching or what teaches is done, but follow Christ because any teaching, any preaching ought to point a, a, a lost soul or a believer to Christ. Amen. Okay? Now, in verse 18 began with an introduction to the power of the cross and human wisdom. Paul declared that the message of the cross and salvation is foolish to those who perish. They do not understand how they can be saved through the work of a man who was crucified. Although it sounds foolish to perishing to those who trust in the message of the cross, the preaching of the cross is, in fact, the power of God. Hearing about the power of the cross and the crucifixion is what leads a person to eternal life. When I was studying this lesson and, and it brought to my mind that the preaching of the cross is one way or another, whether we believe or not, is something that we're going to have to face with when we leave here. Okay? Now, knowing that we don't leave here, as I say it all the time, we should begin to make preparation. A guy told me many years ago, a fellow asked him, said, what would you think you'd have spent all your life preaching about Christ and then you die and find out that there's no God? He said, well, what would you think if you didn't live your life any kind of way and you die and you find out that there is a God. <laughs> See what I'm saying? So, so sometimes Paul was addressing something that may sound foolish to some of them. Okay, in verse 18, he said, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. They perish it because they fail to believe it. But unto us who are saved, it is the power of God. To us. Who are saved. Now Paul addressed this in Romans 1 and 16. He said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jews first, and then also to the Greek. Now, the power is the power of God. You know, I was thinking that no matter what we face, if we believe, what Christ done, and we should believe what Christ done on the cross, we can get through it. Because first thing, we take it out of our hands and put it in God's hands. You, you know, a life that don't believe is, is one that walks around the, 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 uh, depressed and defeated every day of their lives. Okay? And then, he said, it is the power of God. Okay? Now, and Paul was addressing this. And he was talking about this, uh, about how the preaching was so important, okay, to them. In, in the book of Acts, 17 and 18 verse, and we're going to move on, said there are certain philosophers of the Epicureans and the Stoic encountered him and said, unto, unto, said what will this Bible say? Others, some... He seemed to be a setter forth of a strange God because he preached unto them Jews, to, unto them Jesus and the resurrection. Now, they didn't want to understand what Paul was preaching at Athens. They didn't want to hear because they said he preached some strange God. He talked about Jesus, this, 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 this man that died on the cross and was raised from the grave. To them, that didn't make sense. But the key word, he said, those philosophers. All right. The philosophers. Those that thought they knew it all. You know, I was thinking this morning when I was getting ready, a lot of those philosophers and, 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 and that knew it all, that uh, Socrates and Plato and all these Greek philosophers, and all some of them just wasn't Greek, some of them just thought they were smart. Where are they? Okay, now he addressed this. He said now in verse 19, for it is written, 
I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. He will destroy the wisdom of the wise. Those that thought they knew it and will bring nothing, bring nothing the understanding of truth. Now, the wise, and, and, and I think about it all the time, and I look at things God has often. Every time man has thought that they had something to figure out, up comes something else that's been in, in there for years and years and years, and they got no answer for it. So guess what they do? They go back to the drawing board, or they give some type of explanation, but they don't know it. You know, and I was thinking about this, and, and, and there was so many, and, and I... You know, I love to see people get in the word for themselves. Amen. Because we don't become prey to those that are giving their own opinion, their philosophy about things. You know, I've talked about it a long time back in the year to in the 2000 turning, there was such a great rush to, to Jerusalem and people, oh, oh, you know, it's the end of the world is coming in 2000 and people was panicking and quitting job and taking their money out of the bank and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Right. And I said to myself, what's wrong? When the word of God said no man knoweth when he's coming back. But people was flocking after that because they were more into the person that was saying it than they were, than they were into God's word. Okay? Now he said, I will, in the, for in the written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. In the book of Isaiah 29 and 14, he said, therefore, Isaiah prophesied to God, said, therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder for the wisdom of their wise men. Men shall, men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudence shall be hid. And what Isaiah was prophesying to God said, He's he going to do some marvelous things, and those that thought they had to figure out going to wonder about it. You know, we got a common thing we say a lot of time when we see something we don't understand. You know what we say? I wonder how that happened. I wonder where that come from. I wonder how they done that. I wonder how God done that. You know, because it put us to thinking that, to look that that is a higher power than what we see among those smart people. Okay? He said now, a question in verse 20, where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Has God made the foolish the wisdom of this world? Now, in Isaiah again, 44 and 24 and 25. I got a lot of scripture this morning. In Isaiah 44, 24 and 25. He said, Thus said the Lord, thy redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb. Mm -hmm. I am the Lord that maketh what? All, all things. things. Lord that maketh all things that stretches forth the heaven alone. Mm -hmm. Okay, nobody else alone. Wow. That spread abroad the earth by myself. Okay? Then in 25, look what it said. He said that frustrated mm -hmm. the token of the liar. And mean they, you know how it is when somebody gets frustrated, they see something they don't understand, they get frustrated, why they can't figure it out. He's a that frustrated token of the liars, liars, and making diviners mad. People that think they got it. Oh, I got it, I got it. He's a that turning wise men back and make it their knowledge foolish. Now, what he said is that we're not talking about earthly wisdom. Mm -hmm. There are some smart people. I'm not going to take that away from them. There are some smart people. Mm -hmm. But there is no one mm -hmm. that can match the wisdom and the knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. There's no one can match the wisdom and the knowledge of God. And when God does something and make them wonder, it make, it turn them back because they said, I got to go back to the drawing board. Mm -hmm. I thought I had this figured out. But oh no. There's something different here. And then he said, for after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by the wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolish of the preaching to save them that believe. Now, he said, now, how can 
one thing. Now the Jews think and say, well, this, this, this Messiah is going to come. He's going to be a conqueror to take everything that we've been going away, mm -hmm. going through, take it away. But when Jesus came and he set forth some teaching, mm -hmm. and he didn't get them by surprise, he told them, he said, he said this kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom is not of this world. He told them, I'm going to leave you. And he was preparing them. So when, when, when Jesus was took to the cross and crucified and buried, they said, can't be the one. Mm -hmm. But to understand this, this is for all of us. No matter how good our life is down here, no matter how much we accomplish, we can have more degrees than a phenomenon. But one day, it's going to be over. It's going to be over. There have been a lot of wise people, and, and a lot of wise people's prestigious position, and all of these things been in place, but one day it was over for us. And then he said, where is the wise? Can they answer now? Okay, in the book of Luke 10 and 21, he said, in, in that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, mm -hmm. Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and had revealed them unto the babe, even do so, even so, Father, for it seemed good in thy sight. Now, when Jesus was commissioned at seven there in Luke, Luke was recorded when the seventy was commissioned. You think about it, it didn't get a lot of, it didn't even go down to the Pharisees and the Sadducees because they thought they already knew it. Jesus got those guys that was out there mending their net and fishing and said, come and go with me. Not to say that a person that's small and wise can't serve God, but you first, to be able to be a servant of God, we got to come off our high horse, forget what we, our prestige, and humble ourselves to be used by God. Right. See, now, if you had went down to the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes, they would have figured, we know all of this. You know, because they were recording, they were taking everything down. Scribe, which transfer from scripture. They were writing everything so when it got to that point, oh no, no, we, we, we can't follow him. We know it. We know all of this. And then when Jesus came, there was some that didn't want to accept Jesus because of where he came from. Alright? He came out of now. But the question was, could any good thing come out of now? Because what it is, the, the, the foolishness sometimes that, that people pay attention to, it leads to nothing. It leads to nothing. As believers, as, as people that walk by faith and not by sight, we got to get, get caught up Stay with us, in, in, in the foolishness. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you what I'm saying. I ain't got nothing against nobody, higher, whatever they're doing. But when you see churches packed today, you can go home and look at the TV. Right. Do like I have done. I look at the TV. And I sit there and I listen for a while. Mm -hmm. And I listen to what they're saying. Stay with us, Sometimes they'll tell it sound good. Right. You know, if I need a little money on my pocket, and they talking about you can get the money in your pocket, stay with us. It sounds good. Uh -huh. But very little time, or if any time in it, that they preach the message of the cross and the wages of sin and death and the gift of God is eternal life. You don't hear much of that. All right. <laughs> okay? Now, we can, that's the foolishness. That can, they can pack the house with that. But one day, we have to leave here. And we need to accept what Jesus Christ had done on the cross. Okay? Now, Paul, in Isaiah 29 and 14, he quoted, which, in which God vowed to destroy the wisdom of the wise, to explain that there is no wise person who can do what Jesus has done. God cannot, can, cannot be known through human wisdom. Okay? Through human wisdom. That's why we have to get in the spiritual realms to understand what it is. Because, you know what they said? Well, he went to the cross and he died. And even those ones that walk with him every day, they had pretty much figured that's the end of it. They figured that's it. But Jesus told them about it. 
And I can't help but go back on that road to Emmaus when he was walking and talking with those two disciples. The Bible don't say it, but I know when I used to walk the road there kicking out, kick cans and stuff. So I mean, they were just walking with the head down, wondering what had happened. And Jesus came there and he began to talk to them. And he took them back to what the scripture said. And when he took them back to what the scripture said, they began to understand that we talked to the very one that we saw go on the cross. And he ain't on the cross now. He walking with us, opening our eyes because we had our eyes blinded because of the situation that we had encountered. We don't want to get caught up. We don't want to get caught up in, in a lot of foolishness when we ought to stay consecrated on the message of the cross. Let's move with our second outline. It is by faith. We're going to ask someone to read, someone to read 22 down through 25. For the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Amen. Okay, thank you, Nick. By faith. Now, the Jews were looking for a sign that they would be delivered. They were not seeking a message of crucifixion. The Greeks were seeking wisdom, but they rejected the wisdom that came from the crucifixion. Both the Jews and the Greeks rejected they were seeking for they were seeking because it did not come in the way they expected. Now, in 22 it said, for the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Now, they were looking for a sign of the coming Messiah in Luke 11 and 16. He said, now, and, and others tempting him, Jesus, sought him for of a sign from heaven. They would say, well, we got all of this knowledge about the coming Messiah. When he's going to come? We require a sign. That was what the Jews used to. And the Greeks, they seek after wisdom. They were, they was 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 sharp on a lot of philosophy, you know. But you know what? They they were sharp on philosophy, but they were messed up because they believed in many gods. Yeah. The Greek the Greek mythology and all that stuff. They believed just in a lot of gods, but they wanted a sign of, of knowledge about this. But then he said, Paul said, but we preach Christ crucified, a uh, crucified, a stumbling block. Okay, unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greek foolishness. Now, the Greeks, well, as I say, they believe that Greek mythology, and to them, a Messiah coming, dying on the cross, didn't make sense. Didn't make sense. And it's just like, you know, a lot of times we get caught up in stuff, our agenda, what we want to push over, Amen. and we miss the most important thing, the reason why we're here. Amen. We here to understand the word of God. And when we apply the word of God, let's not just talk, but apply it, and it should make us better. Okay? Because it's not us, it's the cross that's gonna make the difference. Amen. He said, but unto them which are called, key word, both Jew and Greek, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. The power of God and the wisdom of God. Now in Romans 1 and 4, he said, and declare to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. You know when we're faced with things, and I, and, and, and I can be a witness that, the only thing that's going to get us through is not our money, it's not our prestige, it's knowing what Christ done on the cross. And once we accept that, that gives us power to go through things. We might not go through it smiling, but you know what? We're going to go through it and say, I know God got this. Yes, yes, yes. You know, I will trust in the Lord. That, those people, when they sang that, that meant that no matter what they're going through, they were going to trust in the Lord because he was going to be the one that would bring them out of whatever situation they're in. And then in 25, it said, because... The foolishness of God 
hmm, is wiser than me. And the weakness of God is stronger than me. What are you talking about? 2 Corinthians 4 and 7. Said, but we have this treasure in earthly vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of ourselves. Okay? Now, when we are strong, we're weak. And then when we think we're smart, we're not. Because we'll never exceed God. And that's why God, a lot of times, he talks about confound the, confound the wise. In other words, if they can have it figured out. You know, our place is to believe God, trust God, and to listen to what God's word is saying. It's not to, to try to uh, discredit it, not to support our agenda. It's the cross. That's what makes the difference, the cross. And the Jews, well, well, and I'm going to put it to your way where it don't always feel good. Jesus came mm -hmm. on the cross and died. But then, you know what he said before he hung his head? He said, it is finished. Mm -hmm. Well, what is what's finished? The perfect way he came from. Not only did he just die on the cross and they took him and buried him in a Joseph new tomb, but the, the part that he got up mm -hmm. and not just ascended back to heaven, stayed around walking for 40 days where they could see him. And then once they saw him, they remember back what we saw happen just a few days ago. And that's the same Jesus that we saw a few days ago with a crown of thorns on his head and pierced in his side and, 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 and nailed in his hand and nailed in his feet and he's still here. Mm -hmm. But then I like what he said in John 14 chapter. He said, I'm going away to prepare a place for you. Lord. And there where I am, you'll be there also. Amen. But the way that we'll be there where he is, we got to believe it all happens. Yes, See, and we shouldn't be like those, those Jews and those Greeks want to find, want wisdom and knowledge to try to figure out. He never asked us to try to figure out. All right. One thing that we are required to do as believers, and that is to do what? Believe. believe. Amen. Believe. Have faith and believe. believe. Have faith and believe. Okay? Now, in 26, he said, for you see your calling, brother, how that not many wise men after the flesh now, after the flesh is, is, is what they desire, what they want. Okay? Not many noble are called. Now, I said earlier, just because a person is smart, sharp, or whatever, a wise person can be called. But to be used by God, the Bible said we must first deny ourselves and pick up the cross and follow him. We, if we won't deny ourselves, we won't be much good for it. We first got to deny ourselves. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then it says now, but God has chosen the foolish thing of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound found the things that are mighty. In the two passages of scripture, John 7 and 48, <coughs> He said, now, he, he asked a question. Have any other rulers or the Pharisees believed on him? They were wise. They were hearing it, but they didn't believe it. Because they, they in their own mind, they were too smart. They figured they, they had it all. There's no way that this, this man here that went to the cross can, can, can save us. He can't even save himself. That's what they thought. Okay, and then the next one in Psalms 8 and 2. He said, now, you're talking about to take the wisdom. Okay, and then in verse 8 and 2, okay, God chose the foolish thing of the world to confirm the wise. In verse Psalm 8 and 2, he said, out of the mouths of babes and sucklings, you know, breastfeeding. Thou hast ordained strength because of thy enemy 
that those might steal, that thou mayest steal the enemy and the avenger. So God can take whoever. Amen. He can take you whoever he wants to. You that person. Amen. It's not the outstanding. Amen. A lot of times people turn their ear because of who it's coming from. Amen. Okay? Amen. You turn your ear because of who it's coming from. But that don't d d diminish God at all. Amen. It hurt us. Amen. It don't diminish God at all. No. And I don't, I, I ain't, I ain't not going to listen to that. I'm not going to listen to him. Amen. But God can work in mysterious ways. Amen. And he plain to tell us his ways are not like our ways. Amen. His thoughts are not like our thoughts. Amen. And there's a difference between the heaven and the earth. Amen. So God has a way. And, we, and I'd say we can get so caught up in our own agenda Amen. that we'll be lost. This, and the base thing of the world and the things which are despised has God chosen. Yeah, the things which are not to bring to naught things that are. Amen. Now, what are the things that are not? You remember in Romans 4 and 17, it said, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom believe even God whom he quickened the dead and called those things which be not as though they were. Now Paul's letter to the Romans he was addressing something and you remember he was talking about Abraham. It was impossible in human mind. Abraham a hundred years old Sarah nine. It's impossible for man that Abraham and Sarah could have a child. They didn't even believe. It. Remember the Bible says Sarah's sin is laughing. Is, 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 my, is my Lord going to get young again? God took that and made from what was humanly possible for man made a great nation. That's the wisdom of God. Sometimes we can think this situation is too bad. This problem is too big. I can't get out of this. No, we can't in our own power. But we have to remember the words that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In other words, God doing it, not our individual self. Okay, so these are things that he's talking about. So when he, uh, he pushed him to that. And then in verse 29, he said that no flesh should glory in his presence. No flesh. And I think sometimes, and, and I've looked even in my life, I don't know nobody else, but even in my life, some things happen that I go through, I went through, and when I come out of it, I can't look around and get the credit to nothing else. God did it. God did it. Because if I could have went to somebody else and they've done it for me, I get credit to that person. God will take us to a point where we've got to realize that when we come out of that test, we have a testimony. Amen. If we can just get through things, that, you know what? We wouldn't come to church. We would feel like we would feel like some of those Sadducees and Pharisees. We don't have no reason. Why? Our trials, it tells us, come to make us stronger. And a lot of times, that's what God does to pull us closer to him. Okay? Now, it's talking about the wisdom of God and talking about the foolishness of man. The foolishness of men can, can pull a crowd because they know all the tricks to pull. You know? Well, to get them over here to do this and get them over there. We get them. You know, I, I learned a long time ago if we serve some chicken, we get a lot of folks come to church. <laughs> but preach the word. Teach the word. Okay? So even the same thing with, with what what uh, some of them are overflowing with now is the, the foolishness of men that they know what it takes to get people to come out. Okay? That's not what God wants. He, it's not about that. He said now, but of him, verse 30, but of him are ye in Christ, who God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. And when, when the Bible said, if any man like wisdom, let him ask of God, mm -hmm. they give it to us freely. 
Now, it ain't talking about the word of wisdom. You can get that just hang out on the street corner. All right. And you still leave there not knowing anything. Mm -hmm. But when you want the wisdom of God, when you at home and you reading your word and you want to understand it, that's time to ask God for understanding, mm -hmm. for wisdom of his word, for knowledge of his word. Mm -hmm. See, that's the difference from man knowledge and the wisdom of God. Man can put a lot of knowledge in a book. And I guarantee you, none of us will figure out God. None of them. Okay? The wisdom that God gives is, is, is for us to learn what God is saying and get us from this life to life eternal. That's what God wants to go. And then it said, verse 31, that according as it is written, he that glorified, let him glory in the Lord. Now, and what I'm saying is, if we have to boast, if we have to boast or brag, whatever you want to call it, about anything, let it be how good God has been to us. That's where, well, you know, God has been good to me. And I can't boast that I've been good to myself. God, that's some things that Sam could have been dead and gone. But I can boast that God, even in, 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 in when I wasn't worthy of it, God loved me enough to brought me out, Amen. to brought me through it. I can boast in him and in nothing else. Amen. Okay? I can't give that credit to nobody else. Mm -hmm. I know, because God did it. Amen. You know what? And because God done it, that's where we ought to take that, uh, the time out to thank God for all that he's done. Because if we get up and get caught up in all of this foolishness that's around us every day of our life, seven days of the week, we'll miss focusing on God. Mm -hmm. We're not to get caught up in the foolishness. Let's focus on the power of God, the wisdom of God, and what God has done and why God has done. Mm -hmm. Stay focused on the mission of the cross. Mm -hmm. Satan don't want you to stay focused on that. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people go around today and tell you when you when you're dead, you're done. I'm here to tell you, no, when you're dead, you're not done. You got to show up again. You got to show up again. We're going to ask the pastor to come and have his final words. Thank you. Amen. It's a blessing just to be alive. Amen. And I thank God for, for his power and his wisdom, God's wisdom, mm -hmm. that he loved all of us. Amen. And thank God for those who had the right mind that want to come out to the house of God and study out of his word. Uh, that's why it's so important that we will uh, glean through the word ourselves uh, mm -hmm. even when we don't understand. Mm -hmm. He tell us uh, uh, just take an initiative to read. Mm -hmm. And if you come to a crossroad uh, ask them uh, when you have the right spirit in mind, because whoever God speaking through, it is it's the power of his word and the anointing that breaks the yoke. Mm -hmm. Now, what you're saying, preacher, I'm trying to say, regardless of what vessel his word come out of, he don't glory, she don't glory in it. Mm -hmm. It's the power of God that conducts the surgery. Uh, the, the wake up call that we all stand in need of. So uh, uh, it, it's so it's so important. I always tell it's so important mm -hmm. to have a relationship with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Without the relationship, that's what Paul was trying to say. There's a whole lot of uh, stuff in our life. Mm -hmm. That comes by reading his word that can mend that. Mm -hmm. Nobody not perfect. Get Amen. that in your mind. You don't have to step on nobody to get nowhere. Amen. But trust in God. Amen. Uh, not, not, we put too much in man. Mm -hmm. That's follow his word. Amen. Now he used vessels. Because mm -hmm. when people speak, you can you can tell where it's coming from. Those that have an ear, let them hear what the Spirit 
mm -hmm. says to the church. Mm -hmm. And all of us are not ignorant mm -hmm. to his word. Amen. Amen. So that's the safety of the protection mm -hmm. that God has for his children. Mm -hmm. He will not let no evil come against you unaware. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so important that we read and study his word, Amen. that we may get clarity. Because mm -hmm. you'll be surprised, those who haven't been redeemed mm -hmm. in church, in, all over the place. Let me start over again. It comes from the house first. Amen. 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 Yeah, it, it comes from the house. Uh, some people uh, want to come and want the church to do all the, the regenerating. Mm -hmm. But it first got to start in your own house. Well, and then it got to start in that other house that Paul talks about. Amen. That this earthly house of this tabernacle that you, the soul lives in. Mm -hmm. That got to be corrected. And you can't do it on your own. Amen. It's a gift. And what is a gift? It give it to you. Mm -hmm. You have to receive it. Amen. You don't have to he just tell you, you don't have to have no degrees. Mm -hmm. You talk about uh, a theory, social, all the wise men, they still got to seek the wisdom from God to navigate in this, down here on this earth. Because this is not our home. And I don't know why people put so much trust in this little tangible stuff that will leave us anytime. And don't worry about others. Amen. It takes 24 7 for you to be calling on God and trusting Him mm -hmm. that you may get in. Amen. Amen. That's, that's where the power is. Amen. Worry about it. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Mm -hmm. And the day that the, you hear the word, hard not your heart. Your heart. Mm -hmm. You see, He wants to empower you. You trying to empower some that you ain't got the power to empower in somebody else. Every man. You just, when you was born, God made a journey just for you. And guess what? And can't nobody take his place. Amen. Mama, daddy can't take it. The world, you got to walk that journey yourself. Mm -hmm. So why we want to get upset with others? God got all power in his hand. We may get by, but we can't get away. And so much we repeatedly hear the word every time, every time. Mm -hmm. But guess what? When the Lord called, you can't get on. Text, text nobody. They're talking about you going because you don't know. But when he calls you home, that's it for you. Mm -hmm. And whatever you have done, can't nobody tell you you're going to hell or the hell. Amen. That relies in God's wise providence. That's right. So, so the, the foolishness is people coming to church mm -hmm. and, and, and don't want to be saved or learn more to be saved. Because we'll say everything, yes, I may been saved. Then we raise the hand and say, I've been saved and I... Well, you just don't sit on the bench and just be saved. Hmm. That's work to be done. You got to tell somebody else that they made. But if he ain't hit you, you can't tell nobody else. That's right. right. That's right. So that's why we come to learn of God's word. Mm -hmm. And when we learn of God's word, guess what? Our house will be correct. Amen. I'm talking about you inside. And these little babies that coming up. Mm -hmm. Hey. They see who, who, mm -hmm. and you got to teach them why they are young. But if you don't teach them, they grow up. The world will teach them, mm -hmm. and that from their house with heroes with a, a base of water into the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I say the body of Christ. That's only ones those who have a relationship. Mm -hmm. And if anybody tell you there's another way, it ain't another way. Anybody tell you it's a shortcut? There's no shortcut. Right, Guess what? It's just one God. Mm -hmm. One. 
It ain't got nothing to do with denomination, mm -hmm. but it got to do with that one God mm -hmm. that created you. Mm -hmm. And he know when he created you, all about you. Mm -hmm. He know what you're thinking right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sometimes our mind glides yeah. when the Holy Spirit, and you got to <laughs> capture that and rebuke Satan mm -hmm. when you sit in quiet sometimes. <laughs> Because it'll mess you up. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. Sometimes humbleness, as mom used to say, is the way. And I didn't understand it. Sometimes you got to be quiet mm -hmm. and allow the Holy Spirit to work. Mm -hmm. It's something you can't do. Amen. You got to allow the Holy Spirit. And guess what? When He works, mm -hmm. you ain't got to go behind and trying to sweep up nothing, mm -hmm. clean up nothing, because He do a job well done. Amen. Jesus. Straighten things out. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been burdened? Back up against the wall? Mm -hmm. Just call them. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you don't know what to tell them. But the Bible said the Holy Spirit would unravel what you're trying to say, talking to God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he said, I wonder, how can you do that? Well, he made you, he know you. Mm -hmm. He know when your heart's sincere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he know when you are faking it mm -hmm. just to make it. Yes, yes. So let us continue to read our word. Let us pray for the bereaved family. I was helped this morning because sometimes life throws so many curves. And just by coming here in the word will saturate you. You know, we are not an island all by ourselves. Amen. We need one another. Mm -hmm. Well, let God handle that. And you keep your hands off of it. Mm -hmm. yes, if you let go of hell, he'll fix it. Let's okay. stand for our closing prayer. Father, we thank you for your amazing grace and forgiveness. We pray every weakness and human limitation we make of it. Somehow you find ways to use us that give us dignity and purpose and bring you glory and honor. For this we thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Yeah.